Welcome to Eye on You. This year marked the 24th anniversary of Hong Kong's handover, as well as the sanitary of the CPC. When CPC was founded, there were only 58 members, and today the number has grown to over 90 million. With the growing strength of the CPC, modern China is now the second largest economy in the world, and the achievements have been remarkable. Today, we are pleased to have a very distinguished guest, Mr. Tan Yu Chong, the Standing Committee of the National People's Congress, to share with us his experience at the CPC Sanitary Ceremony in Beijing. At the same time, he will also talk about the inspiration we can draw from President Xi's speech on the future development of Hong Kong. The NPCSC plays a key role in legislation and has the power to promulgate and amend both laws and decrees in China. TAM is definitely the best position to grasp the latest development direction and trend of the country. In President Xi's speech, he used over a hundred words to talk about Hong Kong. He emphasized the central government's overall jurisdiction over Hong Kong and Macau and the importance to implement the legal system and enforcement mechanism to safeguard national security, which is crucial for maintaining the stability and prosperity of Hong Kong. So what other inspiration can we draw from President Xi's speech that will guide the future development of Hong Kong? Without further ado, let's welcome Mr. Tam to share his insight with us. Hello, Mr. Tam. Hello. Welcome, welcome to our show and uh, welcome to be our guest today. Mm, thank you so much. Mr. Tam, can you tell us the significance or does the spirit of the General Secretary Xi Jinping's speech uh, have it for the Hong Kong SAR? In his speech, President Xi mentioned it that we must fully and accurately implement the principle of one country, two systems. Hong Kong people admitted Hong Kong and a high degree of autonomy. He implemented the mechanism to safeguard the national security and development the interests. I believe that the development of the country requires us to return to original intention of one country to systems and implement the patriot governance. The interests of country and Hong Kong are the same. We should actively integrate the overall national development. All citizens should take the responsibility to help a great regeneration of the nation. You have mentioned about the importance of accurately implement the One Country Two system. Can you share with us the history of One Country Two system and Hong Kong's deviation on the implementation of One Country Two system? One Country Two systems is a great invention of the CPC in the pursuing national unification. The unprecedented system arrangement has ensured Hong Kong residents' lifestyle remain unchanged, has also allowed the people to enjoy the rights they did not have under British law. No other ruling party in the world has that heart and courage. One country, two systems has proved to be the answer for the common good of the whole nation. Without the CPC, there could be no such thing as one country, two systems. The practice of one country, two systems has experienced some serious challenges in the past few years. But this by no means subjects the system is unworthable. Instead, Hong Kong should construct a government system suited to constitution. The truth is, central government is the strongest defender when it comes to protecting the well-being and basic interests of 7.5 million Hong Kong people. So why is the Communist Party of China becoming so popular in China? All the people the CPC works to ensure that development outcomes benefit all the people in a more adequate manner. Chinese government serves the people from his heart and soul. 
and take the people's happiness, satisfaction as their pursuit and the dimension to the measure they were. After over the seven decades of efforts, the 1.4 billion of Chinese people all sack of the poverty, with no one left behind, all have access to men of the substance, housing, education, and health care. People are able to fulfill the life free from the suffering of war, conflict, poverty, hunger. This is true democracy. I'm sure that everyone in the world will be very satisfied with their government and their governing party if they could make all these achievements. Can you share with us the original aspiration of the CPC and the recent development of the CPC in recent years? Now, since the first day of its founding, the Community Party of China has made a seeking happiness for the Chinese people and vaccination for the Chinese nation is mission. Thanks to the effort of the CPC, the fight against the poverty has been victory and the China has successful and stimulated the absolute poverty has achieved the goal of the building a well-off society in an all round way and has greatly reduced the world's poor population too. China's reform and opening up the policy has brought a new spring to the country's development. The Chinese people have been stepping forward on the road to becoming prosperity and their living standards have been improved. Everything is for the people. So can you tell us about the China's um, democratic and uh, model and system? And how does the central government uh, gain the support from the people and how do they address their needs? The Chinese government puts the people front and center. For example, in facing the sudden outbreak of COVID-19, they put the people alive and health first, took the harness control measures, and the first brought the pandemic under control, making it possible for the people to carry on with their life and work as normal. I have seen the media report that after going through the pandemic, the Chinese people trust in the government and reached 98%. This is true democracy. The Chinese government always seeks people's need, relies on their wisdom, and enable them to be their own masters. For example, when the drafting the 14th of five-year plan. The Chinese government collected a large number of comments from the online channels, allow the people to voice out their views. People's affairs are handled by themselves through the consultation. Wow, the 98% of approval rates is really, really impressive. The rise of China has attracted diplomatic disputes and also containment mm. from the West. In your opinion, um, what kind of strategy shall China adopt in the future? China will continue working to promote the building of the human community and a shared future. Peace and harmony are principles. Chinese people have pursued for more than 5,000 years. Chinese people do not carry aggressive trace to its genes. We care about the future of humanity and wish to move the forward together with all progressive force around the world. China has always worked to safeguard 
will please contribute to the global development and pursue the international order on the journey ahead. We will remain the committed to the promoting peace development, cooperation, and the mutual benefit. We will work to build a new type of international relation and human community with the shared future, promote the high quality development through the joint efforts and use the China's new achievements to provide the world with the new opportunity. So now it comes to the post um, national security era. Mm. So what is the major challenge we are facing um, in, in regarding the um, political and the economic development in Hong Kong? Now, President Xi reminded us repeatedly the world is in the middle of the major changes unseen in a hundred years, which is why the nation's 14 or five year plan pursued a dual circulation strategy. As for Hong Kong, although a national security law has held a restoring stability and order, safety of the residents remain a concern, not to take it lightly. Foreign powers may obstruct China's peaceful development, and Hong Kong will be used as a tool to that end. Not to mention the deep-rooted structural problem created under the British rule, and a new conflict caused by the foreign powers and their proxy in Hong Kong. Therefore, all members of the public must join hands and support the SAR government and the police to safeguard the national security. Otherwise, Hong Kong's long-term prosperity and stability and everyone will be jeopardized. Foreign intervention and the deep-rooted structural problems are indeed the challenges that we are facing. So in order to maintain the long-term prosperity and stability in Hong Kong, in your opinion, what can the government do in terms of policy reform? Hong Kong society has a long believed that a capitalism and a big market, small government, while the civil servant are required to adopt the so-called political neutral and always only well by the book. However, the social economy development is experiencing huge changes in today's new global situation. The SAR government should therefore make a more proactive role in the reforming Hong Kong for a high degree of fairness. We believe the government should establish a policy that actively promote economy, diversification, technological innovation, and such kind of development. The SCL government should seek the consolidate the Hong Kong's traditionally strong core industry and provide more opportunity to local resident and business. So after all, we have the national security law mm. being enacted mm. and uh, we have the improved uh, electoral uh, reform and also we have the principle of the patriots governing Hong Kong. So in your opinion, what will be the mission for politicians in Hong Kong? To serve the best interests of the people. All politicians in Hong Kong should take it into their career mission, the Hong Kong SAR has been returning to the original principle, the governance by the patrons. As a result, public attention will be turned to how well the SAR government coordinates with the pro-establishment parties and the groups in 
resolving profound social issue and improving the people's livelihood. The SEL government must change its traditional democratic mindset and work style to better serve by the people and listening to them and solving their problems effectively, the patients, politicians, and groups. In the meantime, are obligated to reposition themselves with a clear vision and firm commitment to serve the best interest for the Hong Kong people society. A clear vision and a very firm commitment is indeed very important. However, the pandemic has been affecting everyone in the world, especially the youngsters. And they have been deterred from having a clear vision and a firm commitment. So what advice do you have for the young people? And what kind of opportunities are there for them to seize, especially when the pandemic is over, when everything is back to normal? As being said, Hong Kong should integrate it into maintenance overall development process. The mainland remains Hong Kong's strongest support, providing our young people with a future of opportunities. And we must broad mind and actively participate to our nation development. In particular, we must seize the opportunities in the greater Bay Area to create more room for Hong Kong's economy and the people to develop. As a Chinese nation, we should also use the Hong Kong strength to contribute to the growth of the nation. In the new era, our young people should take it their mission to contribute to the society and aspire to become more power, confident, and assure that in the identity as Chinese people so that they can be live up to the promise to their youth and their sincere expectation. Thank you, Mr. Tam, for coming to our show today. Thank you to remind me to come to your show. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you. you.